424 once again with NASCAR Heat 2. And in this episode of our season with Kyle Larson's number 42 Target Chevrolet, we are going to be completing race 32 of 36, which is going to be at Kansas Speedway for the Hollywood Casino 400. This is going to be the final race of the round of 12, and we just locked ourselves in to the round of 8 yesterday whenever we went to Talladega Super Speedway. We won that race because every single driver, except for us, took a pit stop in the final stage. We were able to make it by negative... 0.25 laps, I guess. We ran out of fuel off of turn four, but everybody took a pit stop, so we just rolled to the finish. And then some guys came up behind me, but they were very, very far behind. That was um, a very interesting win. That was our eighth win of the season, so we're now tied with Martin Trex Jr. with wins, um, you know, compared to what he did in 2017 in the actual season that this game is based off of. And uh, we ain't got to really focus that much whenever we go to Kansas. But I'm going to do the best I can, try to get the best finish possible, get some points, you know, playoff points, because we like getting that stuff to make sure we can make it to the Final Four and all that. And I don't know. I need it for my ego. I need it for fun. I, I just want to go there, play a video game, race, and ha have a good time. Don't we all? I don't know. We're using the Target car because I think last time I came here it was for the night race, and we used credit one bank paint scheme. At least I think it was, and this should be the day race, but let's get to the racetrack. I'm wearing another NASCAR Heat 2 t-shirt. Well, I say another, but it's really the same freaking one that I've been wearing for the past, like, 15 videos. And I don't wash this shirt. I'm such a liar. But let's go into qualifying and try to get a start in the top 30. I don't even care what it, You know what? This race doesn't matter. Let's just start last place. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, why qualify? That'll just make it easier. I don't want it to be easy. I want it to be as hard as possible because uh, let's see what I can do if I start in last place at a track that's not a super speedway. Uh, we're going to take it down to the bottom because the inside's open if I just get off the gas a little bit. Got nine laps in the first stage and this is uh, a bit of a sunset race. Looks like it's being run at like freaking five o'clock, but in all reality, they started out earlier if you do 100% race length and then it ends at this time right here. Uh, I wish they just have regular day-night transition so the race will start at two o'clock and finish at like uh, 5.30 at a day race, even if it's, you know, like, percentage of time, they just speed it up instead of having it start at that end. And the inside lane is driving very slowly, so I just crashed into Joey Gase, but Joey Gase sucks, so that's okay. Take to the inside of DJ Kennington, running up both these guys on the track. Ty Dillon, he was in, like, the top five at that Daytona race last weekend. Why? I don't know. I mean, he's driving a camo car, so I can appreciate that just because it's the Independence Day race, or one of the Independence Day races because they fall right in between for the NASCAR schedule. But, um, it's just weird. Like, that's like the best race that he's ever had in his career. And that is the only race he's going to have like that in his career. <laughs> just thinking about it. Ugh, keeping it down at the bottom quite easily. Whenever you race this track online, you go to the outside because it's the fastest way around the track, but I don't know if I can try that racing offline because I don't remember it working quite well. Or maybe that was just Las Vegas, I don't know. David Reagan is, like, all the way up against the wall. He's, he's doing the Larson line. I'm Kyle Larson, and I have not been running the outside line at any track all season long. I feel like a bad representation of a really great driver with a lot of potential. Oh my god, I just hit Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell was leading laps at Daytona. I almost won the race car by hitting the apron. So, now is the time to do some Kyle Larson stuff. We can do that. This could be the race where we just take the Larson line. And I have a lot of practice running the outside line at this track. Usually it's the night race because everybody does the night race whenever you go online because they don't even take the time to switch the thing or whatever, but uh, I think I can do it just fine at day race. I could probably pass cars as well on the outside of this track. Just, just as fine. I don't know if I'll do it as fast, but I can make it work. It's just whenever you come off the corner, very often, if it's like three wide, they don't want to give you room. They just want to make you feel bad and suffer. There, see, I'm, I'm here. I have to press up against him because he doesn't want to acknowledge my existence. Fuck you, Alan Merle. He almost killed me at Talladega. Now you're trying to kill me again. <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking about cutting that footage out just because it was kind of a mess. and I felt like I was going to win the race because I knew they were going to take a piss off by getting short on fuel. Uh, they don't really try that just running with no fuel thing. And I just crash into Clint Boyer from driving so slow and hits the wall. But that's not a caution. We just had a bit of a collision. Danica Patrick hits the wall and pulls up Chris Buescher. So that's going to put us into the top half of the field finally. After, I guess, six laps. 
Okay, get to the bottom, block Chris Buescher. Kind of overdrove the corner. Uh, my NASCAR Thunder 2004 career mode video is ready to edit. I just had to put it on file preparation or whatever the damn thing is called so that I could edit it swiftly or something. It's the, um, which race is it? The one that comes out on Tuesday. Race 5, I think it is, at Darlington. Uh, I'm not going to give you any hints on how that race went, but I can tell you it always could have done better because that's how hard career mode is. So, um, next time we're going to have two laps left in the first stage, and I think at best we're going to be able to finish in 18th, but I don't want to pass it because then I'm going to have to start on the outside, rather stay in 19th, and start on the inside. It's kind of hard not to pass somebody whenever the guy that I have that's in front of me is bad. It means I have to purposely drive bad, and I'm not good at sucking, okay? Austin Dillon's been thinking about passing me because I'm driving so slow to keep my eyes on the ass of the dinger, but there you go. Stage 1, 19th place. Uh, I don't know if we're taking pit stops or not, but that might change some things. Okay, we're taking pit stops. we got six laps on fuel. The right sides are actually already, like, freaking halfway worn in terms of percentage, so... We're just going to, yeah, we're going to get four tires, two cans of fuel, and I have no repairs to make. Of course not. The car drives fine, at least in my opinion. We don't lose positions, so, yeah, we're going to be starting right where we finished at the end of the first stage. So, it's a good idea to not pass Alan Neger. Though it might have been slightly possible because we were closing the gap with Alan Neger to those guys in front of us, and I probably could have driven faster. I didn't think I was really going to risk it. But it doesn't matter if we did or not, because now we have a whole other stage, and I pass over half the cars in the field in the first one, so I could probably win stage two, knowing that we have fresh tires just like we did a while ago. These guys are better drivers because they're at the front of the field, but I still think I can manage. Get a run off turn two, passing Ryan Newman. Kyle Busch is going to make it three wide. It's really kind of a combination of me and Kyle Busch making it three wide. I'm losing grip on the bottom on fresh tires. That's, that's not right game. Chase Elliott's guy that's choked his chances of getting to the final four completely away as soon as the playoffs start. He's in 13th. And I think I can already confirm drivers like Truex, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch are going to be making it into the round of eight, but I don't know about Eric Jones. I think he's kind of already out of it. He might be in 13th, possible of getting like a top 10, but that ain't going to mean that much. Delonar Jr., he can win a race. In other occasions, he finished dead last, so I don't know what to expect from him. My car is not handling the way I want it to right now, to be honest. I'll, I'll head into the bottom of the corner, and I'll try not to hit the apron, and it'll just drift up the track. But I've still got the time to pass all these guys. We're in 13th place, so we're we've already past six cars. I'm too busy trying not to hit Chase Elliott, so I can't pay attention to the apron, but Chase Elliott gets a runoff of two, and he's going to make a three wide pass on both Kurt Busch and Denny Hamlin right here. Uh, should I try outside line again? I am Kyle Larson. Could you just... What the hell? Denny Hamlin, please do not DNF again. Or at least not in front of me like that. I don't know what he's doing. I can drive so much faster than the corner on the outside, to be honest. Because to keep it at the bottom, you have to drive slower, so I don't know. There we go. Get off the throttle. Back on. I mean, it makes it possible to pass cars as they hold the inside line so much. Ryan Blaney, don't hit that. Don't hit that. Oh my god, if he hit that, I would have had no room to dodge his back pump with Kirk with or anything. Uh, trying to dive into turn three. It's like my car can't even run the inside line, period. It wants to be on the outside to make progress. It's just, it's scary whenever the, there's somebody up there doing something like what Ryan Blaney was doing. And I'm trying not to hit Kurt Busch because that'll just cause a massive wreck. It's hard to race the leaders, I can tell you that right now. And it's not hard because they're better than me or slightly as good as me. It's hard because they're there and they exist and it's hard to avoid making contact. The LNR Jr. hits the outside wall. See, if I was, you know, running the outside and there were cars underneath me, I would have been pinned in and it would have been just tragic. We got people that keep getting really close to the outside wall. I see somebody up there looks like Kevin Harvick. It's like the leaders are more aggressive than the guys at the back of the field for no reason. To maintain their position, they drive it so hard into the corner that they hit the damn wall. And yet they're still up here. It's weird. Okay, I can hear Logano's tires squealing. I, I stopped paying attention to my turn because I heard that. I was wondering if I'd mess up this corner or something. Yeah, I cannot win stage two. The field spreading apart, and these, a lot of these guys are driving silly. I don't know what the hell Joey Logano is doing over here. He went to the outside, and then went back down to the bottom. Uh, they do this at Kentucky, but at Kentucky it's even worse because the track is so freaking flat. Dive it into turn one. I lose freaking grip to the bottom lane so much. 
I can't dive bomb the corner. I'm not trying to dive bomb. I'm trying to take it like a normal person making a normal pass. Okay. Well, I'll try the outside line then. Even though I don't know about that on my freaking worn tires. They can't... Get off the fucking wall, you piece of shit. Ugh. Yeah, I, this car doesn't race worn tires. It just, it's stuck on worn tires, to be honest. Well, I get back around Ryan Blaney. But I'm in theory, this car... Do I need to turn up the tire pressure so that its tires don't wear so freaking fast to the point where I can't pass cars? I can just maintain position, if anything? Or do I drop the wedge, make it more tail-happy? I don't know. It doesn't dive into the goddamn corner. This is just pissing me off. I want a car that drives well. I know it doesn't matter how good this car drives at all in this entire episode, but I, I like I like it whenever I can do well, even if the race don't matter. Oh my goodness. But the car is rather incompetent. I'm getting close to the apron. I catch these guys, but I can't pass them. It's like I need the whole racetrack to be able to take advantage of someone else's line. And if their line is mine, then it's, I can't take advantage of it. Simple as that. It doesn't... I'm, I'm turning all the way. I'm letting off and shit. I can't get to the bottom. I can't go down there. Go, 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 go. Fuck you. What, what was that shit, man? Yeah, the whole... You can drive off the track, man, if you want to. There's no rule that says you can't drive down there. It's not a super speedway. Ugh. Get out of my way. I, I would like to get 10th place right here, but this car cannot handle tire wear whatsoever. Now I'm losing positions. I did not think it was this freaking bad, but... We have to do something if we want to finish well in this race because my car can't handle tire wear. It's as simple as that. I don't know what Daniel Suarez is doing now. But the leader's been doing stuff like that all race long. Okay, stage two is just fucking garbage. Stage one was much better because we weren't passing drivers that are better than us. I can't pass drivers that are better than me whenever I have worn tires. They're only better than me whenever my tires are worn because I guess they just don't get tire wear. Uh, 15 laps remaining. Oh... Uh, I mean, if we have five laps on fuel and we just ran ten laps, that means we're probably going to make it like a fuel lines race again. Okay, pit stop. Two gains of fuel, four tires. No damage to repair. Um, and drop the wedge down 49%. I don't know about tire pressure because that'll just cause the freaking tires to wear fast. We'll have more grip early on, but I don't know. We lost 12 positions. That means some of these guys think they're smart, but in all reality, they're dumb for trying pits, right? It'll be easy to pass them. I just hope that it's all the freaking leaders that were always behind that did that because that'd be helpful. I mean, it couldn't have been, because that means with all these guys that just got in front of us, they were behind us previously, so... Um, a lot of these guys are easy to pass, but the leaders, not so much. Unless the leaders tried that same pit strategy as well somehow. Still not being able to hug the bottom, but we're passing cars nonetheless. See, now we got 10 laps left, because we just skipped somebody under caution, so... Well, not 10, 12. I'm getting my numbers backwards. Get a grip, damn it. And now we're four wide. Damn, I'm off the throttle, we're going to the corner, and the car can't turn. It's as simple as that. I don't know what to do with this damn thing. It just can't. Uh, well, let's just pass all these easy guys to pass first things first. And you know, once we get to the harder guys, we'll take it to the outside and try it there, because on fresh tires, I think that would work just fine. As long as I don't hit the damn wall like I did a while ago, I was rather unprepared to race the outside line on worn tires. Okay, can you please just turn, 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 turn? It's it's so infuriating. To be honest, um, it's not going to help me in points if I'm not getting as many points as some of these leaders. They're probably getting like playoff points and stuff while I'm stuck in the middle of the field. But I just want to get some extra points in this race. And I wrecked Casey Kane without even trying to. Well, I, I guess I didn't wreck him. He just slid his way into the corner. Uh, up in front of Bagzalowski. Now we're starting to race the good guys. Okay, we can race this outside line again. Guess we're a bit faster. I, I can't tell. I don't like how these AI can race this track the way that you can. Like, they're faster on the inside. Whenever you race the outside, you're as fast as them, but you can't be that perfect. <clears throat> I mean, with them racing the inside line, it gives you more room to race the outside line, but come off the corner, they go all the way to the outside up against the wall like it's a regular freaking track, and that puts you in a really bad position. When Kurt Busch hits the wall. Good thing I wasn't there. Trying to run this line. No, Kurt Busch, please don't do that. Don't hit the wall. I'll be there for you to crash into and make me feel bad. I just ruined a great TV show's theme song. Okay, um, eight laps left. We're making up positions. Dive bomb turn one underneath Ryan Newman. Hit the apron a little bit. That could have been worse. And now my car still can't get a grip at this really low speed. 
oh, why do I try to do anything? Why do I try to succeed in life? Like, I should just well, dye my hair black and fucking start cutting myself because this is just disappointing. Uh, are these guys pitting? What the hell? Why are they pitting? We definitely have enough laps left to make through the race because we just skipped some laps under that caution. It was not even a, literally a fuel mileage race anymore. That's just weird. I, I thought I didn't even have a chance to win this race because um, I, I'm not good enough, apparently. Even um, on fresh tires, I'm struggling to get past these guys. The leaders were just that fast. Wasn't expecting them to be, but I appreciate the challenge nonetheless. But now we got people pitting, and I don't know why. I'm guessing a bunch of these guys. No, none of them are. So I got a big gap, and it's all up to me to clear. I have Matt Kenseth. As we're going off turn two, might be able to pass him going to turn three, but the problem is, whenever you try passing a car, you have to go around them. You have to drive this track exactly the way the track wants to be raced. You can't race the outside line. I've, I've learned that. Even on, you know, it's like you race the outside line, you're fast as they are on the, the fresh tires that they continue to have throughout the race on the bottom line. So we got one lap left. I crash into Matt Kinsley because he won't stop holding me up. So this is like whenever Joe Logano did the same thing to him. He kind of gets in Keselowski's way. Keselowski will get off my ass. So, got to hold him back and we'll get 7th place. It's a good run for this race, finishing the top 10. Keselowski, you can't have anything you want. I, mean, I can't have what I want. I want to win this race. I want to be good enough to win this race. But I'm not good enough. I, I can't accept that. I cannot accept not being good enough at something. The game lagged at the start-finish line, but I was in the race. Top 10. Ah. <sighs> Now, if I had won at Talladega, so we finished like fifth or something, that race, as well as Talladega's performance, this whole weekend would have been good enough to lock us in the round of eight. But just because we won at Talladega, that confirms that we're locked in because you win and you're in situation. Kevin Harvick gets a win, locking himself into the round of 12, even though he was already going to get on points. You know that much. I think the person that won the first stage also won the second stage. Eric Jones, who just won his first race of his career last weekend at Daytona, he finishes his eight laps down, 39th place with the DNF, and they also had said that uh, Timmy Hill, some driver that doesn't even matter, 32 laps down, so he practically missed out on the entire damn race. Yeah, Martin Trek Jr. won the first and the second stage. I remember, he won the first Kansas race in 2017, whenever they went here at night, so that's something to remember. And then you got the playoff standing, so me, Harvick, and Dennis Hamlin were the drivers to win during the round of 12. Uh, Truex, Johnson, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, and Brad Keselowski make it in. So, Kurt Busch, Casey Kane, Dale Hart Jr., Eric Jones. Those are some pretty good choice drivers to actually get eliminated. These are all some pretty damn well-known drivers, drivers you would expect to be making it to the playoffs in the Cup Series. And then you've got some post-race information. Kevin Harvick ran the fastest lap of 30.79, or 30.8, I guess. I don't even know what mine was because I wasn't keeping track of that, but it was probably quite a bit slower. Yeah, Truex dominated, led 31 laps, which is almost the entire damn race. So that means Harvick passed him right towards the end. And we started dead last, finished in seventh. So that was a great run from us. Yeah, tough break goes to Eric Jones. Started 19th, finished in 39th. Next weekend, we're going to start it off by going to Martinsville Speedway for a race that doesn't have a name. But anyhow, that is the first race of the round of eight. It's actually the 70-year anniversary of Martinsville Speedway, um, according to this game. I didn't even know that back whenever they did that race last year. But... This race in particular was the first night race they ever ran at that track in the Cup Series because they spent like the freaking year putting lights around the track. They don't have that in this game, but NASCAR Heat 3 is coming out in two months. Actually, less than two months now that this video has come out. So, I swear to God, if they don't have the night race at Martinsville in that game, I'm going to chunk this controller and just break it. And 704 Games is going to pay for it. I'm going to tell them that they don't have the night race, so they have to pay for my controller. I doubt that's actually going to play out in my favor, but oh well. And we got Texas, my home track, also next weekend. So I should be able to win that race because I've won at that track many times. I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but whatever. Uh, redundantness, just for the purpose of being redundant. Uh, we're going to use the Credit One paint, paint scheme whenever we go to Martinsville because I know we used the Target car whenever we went there last time. I was on that freaking boycotting of the Credit One Bank paint scheme because of how bad Atlanta went in my first freaking race with this paint scheme. But yeah, that was just superstition. And I, I should know better than that. But anyhow, see you next time. That's that. And episode over.